Welcome to Warn, today's news headlines. China hastens military build-up along Indian border, deploys Zinkington light tank. The People's Liberation Army Ground Force, PLAGF, is accelerating its military build-up in Tibet along the line of actual control, LAC, with India, has deployed its newest light tank along this border and has finally given this mysterious tank a name. Photos of the ZTQ light tank specifically designed for operations in mountainous and high-altitude regions such as Tibet were first revealed on Chinese state-controlled media in 2011. It's been known as the ZTQ since, which is odd since ZTQ is the generic Chinese designation for a light tank. PLAGF has corrected this omission and now refers to the ZTQ as Zinkington. It also admitted for the first time it's deployed an undetermined number of this light tank in Tibet along the lac. Chinese state-controlled media revealed that Zinkington outfits an integrated brigade of the PLAGF. It said the deployment of the light tanks expands the capabilities of this brigade and has increased their fighting power. 1st JF-17 for Myanmar commence flight testing The 1st JF-17 Thunder fighter jet for Myanmar has commenced flight testing according to pictures posted online. Myanmar became the first export customer for the type, which is co-produced by Chinese Chengdu Aircraft Industry Group, CAIG, and Pakistan Aeronautical Complex, PAC, with an order of 16 block IIJF-17 fighters in July 2015. Deliveries could commence later this year as scheduled earlier. JF-17 was developed to meet Pakistan Air Force requirement for an affordable fighter jet with advanced capabilities. Even though inferior, at the half cost, the JF-17 can roughly match the performance of the Lockheed Martin F-16 fighter jet. Myanmar is also reportedly interested in acquiring the Block 3 version scheduled to debut in 2019, which is equipped with latest features like active scanned electronic array radar, helmet-mounted display and sight, HMDS, system and the passive infrared search and tracking IRST, system. The JF-17 fleet will be operated alongside the 31 MiG-29 multi-role fighters acquired by Myanmar from Belarus. Pakistan orders one multi-purpose OPV from Netherlands Daemon. The Pakistan Navy has ordered a multi-purpose offshore patrol vessel, OPV, from the Dutch shipbuilder Daemon Shipyards on Monday, June 12. The contract as signed by the Managing Director of Karachi Shipyards and Engineering Works, KSEW, Rear Admiral Hassan Nasir, an official from Damon Shipyards and the Director of Military Procurement, Navy, Commodore Shafkat Azad. The Netherlands Ambassador to Pakistan Jeanette Seppin and the Secretary of Defense Production Lt. Gen. R. Syed Muhammad Awas were also present at the signing event. In in its official press release, Pakistan's Ministry of Defense Production, MODP, states that the new OPV will have a length of 90 m, top speed of 22 knots and full load displacement of 1,900 tons. As per the MODP, the multi-mission OPV is especially suited for anti-surface and anti-air operations, maritime security operations, day and night helicopter operations, combat search and rescue, and surveillance and intelligence gathering operations. India, Israel sign white shipping pact to share info on Navy, cargo ships. India and Israel on Monday signed a white shipping agreement to improve data sharing on non-classified merchant navy ships or cargo ships, as Indian Navy Chief Admiral Sunil Lanbo met with top brass of Israeli Defense Forces to further deepen bilateral military ties. The agreement was signed by Admiral Lanbo and Chief of the General Staff of Israeli Defense Force Lt. Gen. Gadi Eisenkot after their meeting during which they explored ways to further deepen bilateral defense and security ties. In their talks, they deliberated on overall security situation in the region and deliberated on various aspects of defense cooperation between the two countries. ADMS Lanba CNS calls on and interacts with Lt. Gen. Gadi Eisenkot, Chief of the General Staff, Israeli Defense Force, Indian Navy spokesperson Cap D.K. Sharma tweeted, along with a photograph of the meeting. Lanba, who reached in Israel yesterday, also met Major General Udi Adam, Director General of Israel's Defense Ministry during which various issues relating to bilateral security cooperation figured. The Indian Navy chief's trip to Israel comes ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's historic visit to the country next month. Lanba also visited the headquarters of Israeli Defense Forces. Three imported atomic clocks of DESI GPS satellites stop working. Three atomic clocks of one of the seven satellites of the country's newly operational navigation satellite system, also called DESI GPS, 
have stopped working. These rubidium atomic clocks, imported from Europe, are meant to provide precise locational data. When the time signal is missing, getting true positional accuracy becomes a problem. The initial setback has come at a time when the DESI GPS, though operational, is yet to hit the market for commercial purpose. These three atomic clocks, which have stopped working, belong to the first navigation satellite IRNSS 1A. Indian Space Research Organization, IRO, had imported 27 sophisticated timekeepers for the nine satellites of the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, operational name NAVIC Navigation with Indian Constellation. Out of which, seven of the satellites are in the orbit and two of them are standby. Speaking to TOY, IRO Chairman A.S. Kiran Kumar said, three atomic clocks of IRNSS, 1A have stopped working. But the rest of satellite components are functioning perfectly. In fact, we are using the satellite for messaging activity. The stopping of these atomic clocks has not affected the overall performance of our navigation system. We are targeting to launch the replacement satellite in July. He rubbished reports that said more atomic clocks have started showing abnormalities. He said, we are set to launch more navigational satellites. They are in the process of approvals and clearances. We are also making efforts to restart the atomic clocks of IRNSS, 1A. Leaked mails of South African Gupta family talk of selling arms company Dinal to Adani. A series of leaked emails from the Gupta family that has taken South Africa by storm have revealed that discussions were on between Dinal and the Gautam Adani group to set up a company to produce arms and ammunition in India. Dinal was banned in India till 2014 on charges of corruption and has not been able to make a comeback. The Gupta family controls the South African Sahara group which has been under the scanner for its close relations with the President Jacob Zuma regime. In a series based on leaked internal communications, the South African Daily Maverick has reported that the Gupta family was trying to put together a company named Dinal India, in which the Adani group was proposed to be a significant partner. When contacted, the Adani group said that some discussions had taken place but were not carried through as it was not comfortable with the idea. Adani group had exploratory discussions with Dinal in 2015. However the group was neither comfortable with the partners involved nor with the proposed proposition. Hence, the discussions were not taken forward by Adani group, a company spokesperson said in response to queries by ET. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.